Asia, though, is where the declines really came through in China in particular. And that's on the back of this trade story. Joining us now, Alan Higgins, CIO at Coots. Good morning. Morning, guys. Asia getting hit hard. Europe actually down this morning, despite some relatively good news from the banking sector. Outflows continue from Europe. Asia continues to look fairly difficult. The trade story seems to be one of the main catalysts right now, and it's hard to ignore what is happening in the Asian markets. Is this trade story now starting to get embedded? Is this trade story starting to become a little hardened and the market therefore incrementally just has to price it and price it on the downside? The market is pricing it on the downside. Today is a risk-off day, classic risk-off day. But our judgment is that there will be a deal to be done. We saw the elements of a deal to be done in terms of Europe and the, and the US. Essentially, you've got two business-friendly administrations here. And so ultimately, there's a deal to be done. And also, if you look at the currency, the Chinese one, there's a common interest. The US doesn't want to see a depreciation, a competitive advantage. So you buy these dips? So uh, in terms of wearable buyers of, of the currencies, which have been hit hard, if, if, if we look at the, uh, the best risk reward trade for us, it's EM debt in local currencies rather than EM equities. We are holders of EM equities, but we are lighter than before. So what do you think about the uh, commodities then, Alan? Because they're having a rough day. They've had a rough time of late. Yeah, so I think that that does indicate it's correlated, if you like, with the slowdown that we are seeing in China. Uh, as we know, the U.S. economy is very strong, Europe slowed, so no surprise to see some of the, the metals come off. But uh, oil remains strong enough for us. Oil is still in a, in a, in a bull market, uh, and, and so that's, that will dominate the commodity index as a whole. But look, there's no doubt there's a slowdown in China, engineered by the authorities. They're looking to get this debt level down. Uh, the, the question is, can it be contained? In our judgment, it can be contained. Do the outflows continue from Europe? I think we're 20 weeks of outflows now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're quite right, Guy. The, <coughs> the outflows from Europe have been absolutely horrendous, come out of European equities. Usually, though, it's a contrarian indicator when the outflows have been so huge. And I think that's, uh, someone's actually launched an ETF to go against flows in ETFs, if that's uh, conversely. Yep. So, and. and the, back tested that looks wonderful of course uh, but that's an interesting idea but just from our, our experience when you see these huge outflows especially as percentage of AUMs and they become very large in Europe it's you, you've missed it it's too late uh, if anything now is the time to look again at Europe how uh, how much cash do you think investors are sitting on that could be deployed in Europe Alan okay good question so um, Generally, to be fair, most people have fullish equity weightings. I mean, it's, I mean there are pockets of investors who are, are more cautious equities. Generally, there is a fair bit of cash, but it tends to be bond-related money, which is no surprise when you look at uh, the, the very penal rates on especially high-quality government fixed income. So there's plenty of cash to put to work, but it would tend to be in more defensive strategies. Equity weights are full. What you've tended to see is rather a rotation out of European equities into U.S. equities, to a certain extent, maybe even Japanese equities. 